Good morning. We welcome all of you in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. We have a few announcements to make. Um, there's a sheet in the back for a Bible study, a Lenten Bible study, if you're interested. Um, please sign your name on the sheet. This coming Wednesday, I didn't make it in the bulletin, but this coming Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and the service will be held here at St. Mark's at 7 p.m. Um, there's also a trustee and ad council meeting this Thursday at 7. And of course, our um, yard and clothing sale are, is on Fridays 10 to 3. Are there any other announcements? Did you want to tell them about last night and what the group service did? Oh, yes. We had the, that pink cake uh, supper at uh, Hurleyville, and it was all of the East Sullivan Parish, uh, which uh, we're a part of. And it was very nice. We had a service, and uh, of course, we had pancakes and eggs for uh, supper, which is always popular with me. Um, but we also collected. Uh, clothing and blankets uh, for the uh, immigrants in New York City. There's about two or three churches that um, work with the immigrants and those who are homeless. Uh, and so we're sending a truckload down. St. Mark's had uh, Floyd's, the back of his pickup truck was completely filled. And that went into their truck. I was surprised how they they, how they could have gotten it all in with everybody else's donations. But they did. It was sort of like Jesus is feeding the 5,000, I think, with just a couple of loaves of bread. But it all got in there. And uh, that will be going down to New York City uh, to, to these churches that work with the immigrants and the homeless. So um, that's what we did yesterday. Are there any other announcements? If not, let us begin worship. Please rise if you are able. And join me in court worship. Beyond our witness, above the cold winter floor, there is a glory rising toward the heaven and reaching out to each one of us. Amen. that transforms darkness into hope, that brings light from a cross where old life ends and new life is born. And the glory of Jesus meets us here, rise us from the depths of our lives, and our life will Let us worship from the mountain and hear again, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. Amen. Let's pray together. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illumines the world. Transform us into the likeness of the love of Christ, who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. The same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We have opening King Kingdom of 371. I stand amazed in the presence. We are singing together.
I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Let's see you. Good morning. Good morning, Esmeralda. Good morning, Jeannie. Guess what today is? Oh, I don't know. What is it? It's Tans Trans Transfiguration Sunday. You mean Transfiguration Sunday? Yeah, that's what I said. And how did you know that today was Transfiguration Sunday? Duh, it says so right in the bulletin. Oh, good. So what does Transfiguration Sunday mean? Gosh, I'm just a kid. How would I know what it means? What does tran Transfiguration mean? Transfiguration means being changed from one form to another. So why do we have a, trans tr a Sunday for that? Transfiguration. Well, it's a time when we remember when Jesus took three of his disciples Peter, James, and John on a special trip up a mountain. They went for a hike? Did they go camping? How come Jesus asked only Peter, James, and John to go with them? Didn't the other guys get jealous? Why just those three? Well, Peter, James, and John were closest to Jesus. They were with him the longest, and I think maybe Jesus was preparing them for leadership roles in what would become the church after Jesus' resurrection. Really? You mean like the Pope, the Bishop, and the DS are leaders of the church today? Well, not quite. You see, Jesus told Peter that he would be called the Rock because he would be the leader of the early church. And James and John were known as thun Sons of Thunder because they're of their boldness in telling people about Jesus after the resurrection. I think Jesus wanted to reveal who he was to them, to strengthen their faith when they would need it most. So what happened after they hiked up that mountain? Well, Jesus changed. Changed? You mean like the Hulk? No, silly. The Hulk isn't real. Jesus' appearance changed. He looked different. His body and his clothing became very white and shining. It was so white that it kind of blinded the three disciples. Wow, what happened next? Well, all of a sudden, two men joined Jesus. It was Moses and Elijah. Hey, wait a minute. Moses and Elijah, they were dead and gone hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. True, but there were, they were there with Jesus. Boy, this is becoming some camping trip. What did Peter, James, and John do? Well, they were so scared and nervous that Peter offered to put up three tents, one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one from, for Elijah. He didn't really understand what was happening. But why was Moses and Elijah there if they didn't want to go camping with them? Well, I think that Moses and Elijah were, re were reminders of the covenant or agreement that God had with his people. Moses represented the law that the people were to follow, and Elijah was a great prophet telling people what God wanted them to hear. And by being there with Jesus, God was showing people that the old covenant was being replaced by a new covenant, that Jesus was the one to follow. So the Israelites who followed the law of Moses should follow the teachings of Jesus instead? And Jesus was like a new prophet that people should listen to? Yes, but that wasn't all. Something else happened. Wow, this just gets better and better. What? They heard the voice of God. His real voice? Yes, and God said, 
This is my son whom I, whom I have chosen, whom I love. Listen to him. And then the cloud lifted and Moses and Elijah were gone and only Jesus stood there. And Jesus told Peter, James, and John not to tell anybody about this until after Jesus was resurrection. So God said Jesus was the one to listen to now, right? That must have been exciting for the disciples. They knew they were on the right team. <laughs> and even though they were afraid now, they would remember this time after Jesus was crucified and resurrected. It would give them strength and courage to share the good news of Jesus with everyone. Even when the times were rough and dangerous to do so, they would be the ones to help build a strong foundation for the church to be formed. I like Transfiguration Sunday. It's like we too can change or transform into new people when we repent of all the wrong things we do and follow Jesus' teachings. Right, as when we go from living our lives doing what we want to do to living our lives the way God wants us to live, we become different. We are transformed into a being like Jesus. And that's the goal, to follow Jesus, learn from him, and to become like him. Wow, can I pray? Sure. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for Jesus, your beloved son. We will try our very best to listen to him and to become more like him every day. Help us to do this. We are a little, we are so little and weak and we can't do this on our own. We need your Holy Spirit to give us courage and strength to follow Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Bye, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Time of offering. Let's offer meetings. Praise God from whom all Jesus. 
and from 2 Peter 1, 16 to 21. For we did not follow a cleverly devised story when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses to his majesty. He received honor and glory from the Father, God the Father, when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to the light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origin in, in the human will, but prophets, through human, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. This is the word of God for the people of God. I wish and pray that God's grace and peace be with you all. Nevertheless, let me say something. <laughs> we will walk into the spiritual journey this coming Wednesday, uh, which is Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent. As you know, church tradition has this Sunday as the Lord's Transfiguration Sunday, and it is right before Lent. We know the Transfiguration story very well. Before entering the dark valley of passion, our Lord went up on a high mountain and was transformed into the glorious image. We don't know which mountain he went to, but it's not important to know where he was because the more important thing is to know the fact that Jesus was in the presence of God the Father and he revealed himself as a Messiah. In fact, what a high mountain meant was nothing other than God's presence. Yes, Jesus took Peter, James, and John up there there the disciples saw their teacher with new eyes in wonder because the Lord was transfigured. He looked completely different. The disciples finally found out who Jesus really was. As a Messiah, he was the light itself. The Bible says, his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. The light leaking from him in Jesus was the very light that split the darkness at the beginning of the world. So now the disciples discovered something transcendent from the person they thought they knew. They realized he was the long awaiting Messiah for all. Indeed, it was an incredible moment. But later, what surprised them even more was the fact the Messiah was going down to the path of suffering, passion, to the cross. In our second scripture reading, Peter talks about that day to preach about the power of Christ. So let us put ourselves in the shoes of Peter who is writing the letter. Maybe he would recall the days he read the Lord's from the time he was called to fish for people at the river of Galilee. The miracle of five loaves and two fishes in the wilderness must have been a thrilling experience to him. And how majestic Jesus was when he rebuked the wind and the sea to calm down. And although he was only for a short moment, Peter would not be able to forget that he worked on the word to the Lord. And 
How could he forget the moments of the Lord Transfiguration on the high mountain? However, around the end of his remembrance of Jesus, Peter would have fallen into a deep silence. Listen, he might have tears in his eyes as he remembers he denied Jesus three times in the courtyards of the high priest's house. He can't forget that not only the whole world but also his whole heart was covered with thick darkness at the moment Jesus was nailed to the cross and died. And then Peter will recall the moment when he was thrilled and moved to tears after he met the reason Christ. Based on these experiences, Peter speaks to his church community, says, His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Here, Peter is not saying this simply out of knowledge. No, he is talking about this as a witness who has experienced and enjoyed this fact. Earlier, I suggest that we should put ourselves in Peter's shoes. And now I suggest that you look back on your past days with the Lord. Maybe the, Lord, the day you met Jesus for the first time, or the day of joy when you glorified His name, the days you were struggling with difficulties and going through them in prayers. And here the question then, can we find life, godliness, God's redeeming love, and His sustaining grace within us still after going through those moments with Jesus Christ, our Lord. What do we realize and experience through these times of reading the Lord's Transfiguration each year? Through the Lord's who heard, This is my Son, the Beloved, with Him I am well pleased. Are we deeply convinced and thankful that we are also beloved sons and daughters? always and everywhere. To be honest, as I ask these questions, I find myself becoming infinitely smaller. This is because I know I do not deserve to ask you these questions. I know I'm still very weak and sometimes very selfish. However, the other thing is the Holy Spirit leads me to proclaim that the freedom we can enjoy in Christ is amazingly great to all of us here and now. In other words, although we are weak and sometimes selfish, we are offered the freedom, freedom to live a righteous, courageous, and godly life with the power of God when we live in the light of Christ. Yes, when we live in the light of Christ. Even in the face of life challenges, we have the freedom with which we don't have to be afraid because we know who we follow and we know because we know the reason to live. So every time I read the Apostle Paul's confession, I feel a spiritual thrill in my heart says we are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed. Of course, sometimes we fall or fail or suffer, but we have the confidence that we will rise in Christ and we will be finally victorious in Him, indeed. And that's what we Christians are. And now to those who are still hesitant to follow the Lord in faith, Peter 
exhorts to hold to the words of Christ, says, So we have the prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this as to a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your heart. And the book of Matthew also tells us about the heavenly voice that we should listen to Jesus. This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. The world we believe in is the Son of the Living God who saved us and lead us to His Word. We too can become like Him. We have faith. The beloved sons and daughters, we can. How? By listening to the words to our hearts and embodying it with our body. In fact, in every case, we, to put our will forward, we prefer to talk rather than listen. We talk too much, not only in front of people, but also in front of God. I mean, in prayer. We talk even when we shouldn't listen to God. However, what is really needed for Christians is listening to the Word and living according to the Word. I believe we can become rays of light illuminating the darkness in the world only when we live according to the Word of the Lord. My sisters and brothers in Christ, yes, we are ahead of the journey of the Lenten pilgrimage. Lent is the season to redefine our lives according to God's will. On this day to commemorate the Lord's transfiguration on the mount. So let's resolve together to live a life that reflects the light of Christ. The Lord will be with us always. And to reflect the light, let us have the words until the morning star rises in our heart and strive to translate the word into our lives. As we listen to the Lord's words and begin to live according to His will, we will be illuminated by the Lord's light and will bring the light to the faces of our neighbors. May we all receive the Lord's light and illumine the dark walls with the light, the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. The face we see, number 2173, Shine, Jesus Shine. <laughs>
Do we have any prayer requests? Yes, ma'am. To, we have one joy that um, we'd like to share with you. Um, not only did we have a pancake supper uh, last yesterday, but it was also Pastor Toy's birthday. So we wish him a happy birthday. <laughs> of every nation and those who are in authority over others. We pray that you open their hearts to receive your guidance from your Holy Spirit so that they will, open, they will be open to your holy will and will govern with respect for all peoples. And Father, we lift up the victims of the recent earthquakes in Syria and Turkey. We're stunned by the sheer horror of the magnitude of the loss of life in this disaster. We pray that those lives lost are at peace and with you this very day. And our hearts go out to those who are left to search, rescue, and recover those people. We pray also for those who have survived and are now facing unimaginable horror of just trying to survive. We pray that we become aware of how you want us to help. We also lift up our brothers and sisters who are in need of healing, physically, mentally, or spiritually, especially those who are fighting a battle with cancer. You know their individual needs, and it is in love that we ask for your healing, strength, comfort, and courage. We lift up Catherine DePew, Donna Coombs, Raphael, Christy, Stuart, Teresa Hinkle, Sandy Donahue, Marilyn Rogerson, Tom Fisa. 
and we lift up others who are in need of your healing comfort and care. We lift up Ken D. Finney for restoration of his mind and strength for her. We lift up Stevie Bradley for strength and determination in, to, in improving his health, protect him from the things that would impede his progress to better health, and be with him as he travels to the Bronx for consultation on his upcoming surgery. We pray for Bruce Donahue for strength and peace and for his family as they care for him and Sandy. We lift up Troy Dye Snyder to you for continued healing and Bruce Avery. We lift up Faye and we pray, Father, that you would be with her, help to heal that knee that she had replaced. We pray that she grows stronger and stronger each day. And we lift up Lee Freer, who's in the hospital. Lord, we would just ask that you would touch her, just fill her with your peace and your courage to make the decisions that you would have her make. And Lord, we know that there are others that we haven't named, but yet they are, they are on our hearts. And we pray, Father, that you would listen to those names as we speak them to ourselves and as we lift them up to you. We know that you hear all prayers, Lord, spoken and unspoken. And we just praise you and thank you for your grace and your mercy. And we ask all of these, all of this in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
down and speak of what you have seen of God's glory. Do not cling to the holy moments when heaven overshadows you, but as the Lord leaves, listen to Christ and follow Him from the places of revelation to the places of mission. And may God shine the light of glory into your heart. May Christ be with you and never leave you. And may the Spirit renew the image of God within you. In the name of Christ. <laughs>